Parks never had an education in music theory, yet he became a composer, producing classical and popular works throughout his life. I can't remember having been inclined to be an artist. I do remember we had an old upright Kimball piano I used to plunk on, you know, and uh, at six years old. My father didn't like the idea that a boy played the piano for some reason or other. Okay, ready? Stand by. The process of working with Gordon begins with an idea. Okay. He'll start experimenting with sounds, or he will hear a melody in his head or harmony in his head and begin playing it. And the way that his music unfolds is as if it's unfolding right in front of him. It really does come from what he feels when he plays and the sounds he hears when he plays. My job is to make sure that everything he plays gets on tape. The first time that I met Gordon Parks was at a recording session in the mid-60s. His piano concerto was being recorded and I was asked to join the orchestra and play. It's interesting that people don't really know his music uh, the way they know his films and his photography. Um, he was not a Johnny-come-lately to making music. He played piano as a teenager. So he's been playing piano all of his life. He's a fine pianist. He's a fine composer. He's been composing also all of his life. Gordon plays very, very well. Rather than uh, a person who has a, uh, an extensive musical composition training background, his is more organic. And what I would do is I would sit or, or look over his shoulder as he would play uh, his music and take notes, then I would go home and transcribe uh, the music for this popular music. I would look on, the, on his piano and see these strange notations. It's a shorthand, I believe, that he uses. I've never talked with him in depth about it, but I know that on the piano, on a yellow sheet of paper, will be these notations, and they're just like vertical lines, which probably correspond to keys on a keyboard. 